God brought us out of darkness into this marvelous light that we may show for it the praises, the praises of him who brought us out of darkness into this marvelous light. Thank God for, for that because if not, we will, we will be still back there in, in darkness, still, still stumbling, still groping like, like a blind man trying to find our way. But thank God we're not trying to find our way anymore because when we find Jesus or when he found us, Jesus is the way and he's the truth and he's the light. He's our way. Many people try to make their way, but you know, we, there's no other way. You cannot he say, he, you what? He say what? You must come in at the door. Jesus is that door. St. John 10 talk about that door. He said, I am the sheep of the door. And anyone that what cometh, he shall find pasture and he shall go in and out. But he said, but the thief what cometh. Not to kill and to steal and to destroy, but I come that he might have life and have it more abundantly. He said the thief going to climb through a window trying to get in, but they can't get in. The only way you can get in, you have come through Jesus Christ. I thank God for Jesus Christ tonight. <laughs> Amen. Like I said, I get up to introduce the, the preacher, but he don't need no introduction. Praise God. But God's been good. You know, I thank God for the message we hear, um, Brother Miller. <laughs> um, thank God for that, for that message. Um, what, what, what do you get out of it? Everybody say, just uh, after three, everybody say what they get. It might sound confused. You know, think about what you got. The highlight of what you got out of that message. After three. One, two, three. The reasonable. Testing. Well, I just the main idea that you get. What was your main idea? What do you get? What you put in your shepherd bag? What you put into practice? See, a lot of times we want to we we want to um, say, did the preacher preach? What did he preach? Uh, what what did it benefit you? What's your benefit? Bless the Lord, all my soul, and all that with, and forget not what all his benefits unto me. So a message, every time you hear a message, you should take something and put it on. We're trying to get dressed. You plan to get married? If you plan to get married, you, can, you cannot show up and have on a wedding garment. You got to have that wedding garment on because if not, somebody will say, bind him hands and feet and throw him into what? Out of darkness, right? Out of darkness. Well, he brought us out of darkness into this marvelous light that we may show for the praises of him who brought us. Praise God. So I'm, I'm thankful tonight. I'm thankful for that message. I tell you, my highlight in it was conflict resolution. See, he makes so much sense. I heard it before. Thank God I hear it again. Somebody said, I think I read it again. Let it bless my soul. I, I think I want, I want to hear it again. See, most people you go to, if, you, if, you, if you're trying to, if you're trying to solve a problem with a person, you don't walk up to them and say, you know you're just ugly. And you just can't help it. You're just ugly. <laughs> and then you say, I come to solve the problem. You didn't come to solve the problem. You come to start a fight. <laughs> so, you know, you know, it's just, it just, you know, we just have to um, pick our word. We just have to be able to be reasonable. Is that, would, would that be a reasonable statement? If you're trying to stop from going to war with a person and tell them that they're just wicked and low and no good? <laughs> Unless the Lord sent you like that as a prophet. See, um, Nathan was smart enough when he, when, he, when he approached David. He didn't tell David, he said, David, you know, you know what you've done? You took that man's wife and have him killed. What kind of man are you? He didn't approach him that way. He couldn't approach him that way. Because the king probably just said, down with the fellow. Thumbs down. Whip. They take his head out. He didn't solve anything. But he tell him a story. He was a storyteller. He tell him this old elaborate story. And he got upset. He said, what? Who done this? Bring such a fellow for it. Let him be dead. Put him to death. He said, oh, 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 king, I, I, I hate to tell you this, but I was talking about you. He didn't raise his voice saying, yes, king, it's you. You're the one. No, he couldn't do that. He just kindly, softly, because he was reasonable. And he wanted the king to be reasonable. A lot of times we want people to be reasonable to with us, but we're not reasonable. You know? 
Amen. I tell you, that's the part that's, uh, that really hit me hard. You know, we have to be able to solve problems, solve conflict, and be reasonable. Is that so? Let's be reasonable. Let's be kind one to another. Let's be tender hearted. Let's be patient. Let's be long suffering. Let's be gentle. You know, do all those good things that will solve the problem. Don't bump your head because you might get a head here. Yeah, just, just be careful with that. It's delicate. It's important to have it. Don't get rid of it. Amen. I've been good. You know, I tell you all the story. I'm going to sit down. But I tell you all the story. A story was told to me one time. A guy, anyway, make it short. He has he have his son at home killing a goat and get it dressed. So he didn't tell him how to cook it. So he was in the pulpit preaching. We were walking with blood on his hand at the back door. Nobody could see him. So he said, my dear people, I'm a um, I'm, uh, son that's standing by the door. He says, strew the head and roast the lion. Praise be to God. The boy get the message. He went on and do exactly what his daddy said. And the people sitting there don't even know what's going on. Let me say right now. Okay. What, uh, what I was saying that the preacher was in the pulpit preaching, but before he start, before he got to church, he had his son to kill a goat and dress it, but he didn't tell him how to cook it. So he was sitting there talking and his son walking the door with blood on his hand, and he have a question for him. So he said, My dear people, and my son that's standing by the door. Threw the head and roast the line. Praise be to God. And the people have hear what he said, but they know what he's talking about. And they say, hey, man, too. Praise be <laughs> to God. Boy, get up and just walk up. Happy to be here tonight. Praise God. Appreciate the uh, saints of God for uh, pressing out. Uh, thank God for how we started out with the uh, song talking about uh, Lord prepare me to be a sanctuary. Started thinking about that as we were singing. I wrote a couple of things down and uh, um, somebody can help me out. You were singing it too. Um, how do you understand the word sanctuary? Anybody? How do you uh, how do you understand that word sanctuary? Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. Somebody else. Appreciate that. I'm sorry. A place for him to dwell. Okay. One of my youth or our youth. How do you understand sanctuary? Because we're, we're asking him to do something. We said, Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. So how do you understand that? Well, once again, this may just be a little bit unorthodox, but I'm just, I'm, I'm just curious. If you, we, as we're singing it, I'd just like to know how you understand that. Okay. It's all right. A sanctuary, sanctuary, sanctuary. Because we're asking him to prepare us to be that. Lord, prepare us to be a sanctuary. And as I was singing, I, I was just thinking, and, and let me just help you all with this so I, as I help myself. Uh, and this is just something that I do uh, with, with my kids and my, my wife. I think she, she helped me to start it, but it's helped us. I don't know when we started, but it's been helping us. So. Like, for example, after today's service, on the way home, as soon as we get in the car, we'll ask a simple question to each and every one of us. What did you get out of the service? 
and then all of us are required to give some type of response and that's how we journey home every single time that we leave the service. So I know in my mind, I'm just asking you what I would have asked him. What's the sanctuary? We said, Lord, prepare me to be one. And we're singing that. So it's just, it, it's, it's uh, courteous to God to make sure that we understand what we are singing. It's just, I mean, because we want to get the best out of it. Just, we want to get the best out of it. And we want to understand that we, what we sing. And the, and the word of God tells us, I believe it's Psalms, uh, maybe 37 or 47 tells us to sing with an understanding. We want to sing with an understanding. But uh, since there's a delay in the response from you, uh, you will go ahead and uh, help you out a little bit with that. Uh, so a sanctuary, sanctuary should be a holy place, a holy place, a place where the Lord, as Sister Mitchell was saying, where God can dwell at, right? So a holy place. So we are asking God to prepare us to be a holy place. I believe the disciples, when they asked God to pray, uh, he said, they said, teach us to pray. And then he, he just began to say, uh, our father uh, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. So hallowed, hallowed, same word almost, hallowed, same word almost as sanctuary because that's sacred. Hallowed be thy name, holy be thy name, set apart be thy name. So we're asking the Lord to help us to be set apart, holy. And it was in unison almost with the next song because we, we begin to sing, uh, for you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. Then it said a what? A peculiar people. And so I just wanted to just comment on that really fast, just about that. Uh, Lord, prepare us to be, a, to be a sanctuary, and we should be holy and set apart. Dear God, uh, I think I might be getting holy. It's kind of loud. All right. That is not going to help, is it? All right. But as we're singing that song, Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. I just begin to sing it over and over in my mind. I, I, I really want to do that. I want to be something for the Lord. And the, like the, the very next song, it said, you are, you are a uh, peculiar. Once again, same question, peculiar. What is that to you? What is that to you? Uh, I'll say my, I can say you, what, what does peculiar mean? What, do you, what does peculiar mean? Peculiar. Different. Okay. Set apart. Peculiar. And we want, and he's chosen us to be that. And so sometimes, sometimes we can feel a little bit uneasy when we are called peculiar. But in this setting, the way that we're singing it, it's okay to be, uh, if there was ever a time to be different, to now is the time. As you go to school, I'm sure you see some, what will be called peculiar. And so I wouldn't even be concerned about what somebody else thinks about how you are because of how peculiar. Uh, and, and I'm not calling that good, but I'm talking about the biggest holes that I've seen. Like if you punched at them, it'll go right straight through their ear. I mean, you know, because and that's how big the holes in their ears are. They pierce everything. And it's like it's weird. But they call you weird because you want to be different from them. And so I'm, I, all I'm just trying to help you as you're singing this tone, grab a hold of it because God has called us to be holy. Amen. He's called us to be sacred. He's called us to be set apart. Amen. He's called us to those things. And so uh, I would want you to look into that. And uh, what does it mean to you? What does it mean to you to be peculiar? And then what does that look like? How can you be peculiar? Does that have an identity? Does peculiar have an identity? Like what is it? Can I can uh, sh can they tell you are different than someone else? By the way that I'm speaking, by my conflict resolution, I can be different than everybody else. Uh, I can be different. And uh, husband, wife, brother and sister, I think that's right where we are. Siblings, <laughs> we oftentimes can, can be the meanest people to each other, but we're so kind to everybody else. So kind to everybody else. Uh, and it's weird how that works out. You can be the best friend to someone that's not your loved one. And I don't understand how that works, but my sisters, 
And I'm sure I did the same thing to them. I, there's no one that could get under my skin, my skin more than Donna, Charity, and Michi never got under my skin. That's my baby sister. I love her. Uh, but Donna and Charity, and I'm sure I'm just saying their names, because, and I'm sure that they would say mine as well. But oh, they could rub me the wrong way. And I noticed what I noticed about myself is I was so quick to fight when it came to them. But when it was my boy or another person outside of my house, it seemed like I wanted to resolve that a little bit quicker than I did with my sister and my brother. And, you know, it can be the same way with your husband and your wife. Listen, husbands and wives, uh, we, I know, we notice how we respond to the opposite sex. I notice how my, my wife responds to another man. And I know that she notices how I respond to another uh, female. And they can take offense to me being uh, slow to speak, right, with someone else when I'm quick to anger with her. I'm entreating another sister in this church, kinder, and you should do everybody. I'm just giving a little bit of, a, uh, of examples of how that conflict can kind of, uh, it, can, it can get the best of you, but it's really to those people that you're closest to that we, that we need to work the, the, the most at uh, because she knows me better than everybody. My wife does. And if she's devious, if she's mischievous, she can push my buttons if I allow her to. But I'm trying to get rid of buttons to push. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying not to even, uh, I'm trying to get rid of that. I'm trying to, you know, to where if she, if she should decide to poke at me, that that won't work. But that's how we all have to be. We have to be that way because we just got that message on um, Tuesday about how to resolve those conflicts. And he, the first thing he told us, told us to, is to be reasonable. It's to be reasonable. And I think oftentimes uh, one of the things that I teach and I tell my kids this all the time is that listening is an active skill. You have to decide to listen. You, you have to make a conscious decision to listen. So and we call it listening with a purpose. So if you listen with a purpose, there is four things that comes along with listening with a purpose. So uh, you have listen to understand, listen for facts and feelings, listen to build trust and observe body language. And these are some of the things that, I, that we teach those students is that when I'm listening, I shouldn't listen to respond. I should listen to understand what that person is saying. And if I'm not so sure that I understand, you can ask a question to clarify. I'm not sure if I understood that correctly. Are you saying this? Or why do you feel that way? How often do we do that? How often do we ask? Because everybody has a position. And oftentimes the conflict comes when I don't understand their position and I'm just worrying about what I want to say back to them. But they have a reason why they said what they said. It may help or it may not, but quickly try to understand what they're saying and why they said it. Because there's, also, there's always a what and a why. I know this is what you said, but why did you say that? I want to understand that because that'll help me understand you. I didn't say I wasn't trying to say all of this. I was talking about being a uh, peculiar. And that's peculiar uh, for you to want to get that stuff resolved. And so I appreciate God uh, for helping us to become a sanctuary, helping us to uh, become a, uh, somewhere where he feels comfortable enough to come and actually stay. He can come and actually stay. He can take up his abode with us if he's comfortable. And the Lord's not comfortable where there's confusion. He's not comfortable. He will lift up and move. That's, what, that's exactly what he did uh, uh, in, 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 the, in the other days. Yes, if he wasn't comfortable, uh, he, he, he doesn't have to stay there. And so just like that brother uh, that, that uh, said when an unclean spirit is going out of a man, he goes someplace, right? He goes someplace seeking for something. But the problem is when he didn't find rest, he came back where he was comfortable and he found that house empty, swept and garnished. When it should have been furnished with some things that you could have put in there, should have been a mercy seat in there. We're so unmerciful. <laughs> We're some unmerciful people. We love mercy when it's applied to us. But we can be so unmerciful. And I wonder, man, if we're supposed to be trying to be like God, emulate him, how quick, how quick are we to, I guess, cast eternal judgment on someone else? 
<coughs> I mean, we've eternally judged so many people, right? I'll never